So in the lecture for session two, um, we briefly mentioned that um, when you have free markets, there are all sorts of benefits that you can get from trading with people. Um, and it expands the possible um, things that you can consume beyond what you could do just by yourself. Um, and we briefly mentioned the terms comparative advantage and absolute advantage. So what we're going to do is we're going to illustrate this idea using a graph um, to show that if you have two different parties or two countries or two people that have a specific set of skills, um, you can actually combine those skills and have one of them specialize in one and have one specialize in the other and actually get more things out of that transaction, um, which is one of the reasons why um, markets are really great for um, providing goods and services. Once you have specialization, you can increase the amount of stuff that is created. Um, so we're going to do that. Um, by working through an example, I have a fully annotated and explained version of this example on the, the page, on this, on this resources page. Um, but this is going to be kind of a walkthrough of, of, of that, that example. So let me go ahead and switch over to this so I can draw. And we will demonstrate this for you. And so hopefully this will help um, show the difference between absolute and comparative advantage. So in this example, we're going to consider two different countries. We're going to say we have a country named Mexico. Um, so we'll just write Mexico here. And Mexico, if they put all of their efforts into producing stuff, um, this is a simple world of just two goods. Mexico could either produce olive oil or they could produce avocados. So if Mexico did everything possible for avocados, they could produce five tons of avocados. And if they produce, if they focus all of their efforts into producing olive oil, they could produce two liters of olive oil. Again, these units are totally made up. There's no way they're just producing five avocados and five liters of olive oil. Um, don't worry about that. You can pretend it's like five million avocados or two trillion liters of olive oil. I don't know, some number. Um, the actual numbers here don't matter. What really matters is um, kind of how they're related to each other. Um, when we talk about these two different countries. So Mexico here, they can do either five avocados or two olive oils. Um, Italy, on the other hand, if they spent all their efforts, they could produce um, one ton of avocados, which isn't a lot, or one avocado, um, but they could also create five liters of olive oil or five million liters of olive oil, whatever. Um, so if you look at this, it looks like Mexico is really good at, uh, at avocados and Italy is really good at olive oil, and so maybe they should specialize in that. Um, just looking at those numbers directly there, this is an example of absolute advantage. Mexico, in this situation, has the absolute advantage in avocados. They are the best overall at creating avocados out of any other good. Um, Italy is the best at creating olive oil in this situation, so they have absolute advantage in um, olive oil. When they trade with each other though, absolute advantage, the rule of absolute advantage is not what determines how they should trade. It's something called comparative advantage, which means how much olive oil would, Mexi would Italy have to give up to produce one avocado? Or how, much av how many avocados would Mexico have to give up to produce one olive oil? And if it's really expensive to do that, then it makes more sense for them to get for Mexico to get an olive oil from Italy instead of producing it on their own because they're going to give up more avocados. And so we can actually graph this and, and demonstrate this dynamic um, graphically. So what we're going to do to do this is we're going to make a plot here um, with an y-axis and an x-axis. And we're going to put avocados on our y-axis here. We'll just say avocados. And down here we'll have olive oil. This gets confusing because that looks like two zeros, but just go with it. Um, so we'll just add some tick marks here. So there's up to five avocado or olive oils, up to five avocados, maybe six. I think I did six tick marks there. So what we can do is we can plot what these countries can do. So we'll use blue for Mexico here. Um, Mexico, if they put all of their efforts into producing avocados, they could make five avocados and zero olive oils. So that puts them at that point right there. They could also make two olive oils and no avocados, which leaves them at that point there. And if we draw a line here, connecting those two dots, what that means is 
um, Mexico on its own could produce any value along this line. They could make one olive oil and two and a half avocados. If they could make partial olive oils, they could make like one olive oil and two point something avocado, one point something avocados. They can do any of these combinations here. They cannot produce that point there. They can't get two olive oils and four avocados. That's not possible given kind of their their limitations in production. Um, that's that's infeasible. They could get this point down here. They could produce one olive oil and one avocado, but that's not using kind of their full resources. They could um, they could meet anywhere on this line here. So what this is called in economics, this line right here, this is called the production possibility frontier. Um, they can produce any amount of avocados and olive oil on this line. They can't go beyond it, and they can definitely go under it, but they're not going to necessarily want to go under it because that means they're not using their full resources. Okay, so that is Mexico's um, production possibility frontier here. Um, so let's go ahead and erase those points. So we can also draw Italy's production possibility frontier for avocados and olive oil doing the same process. So Italy could make one avocado or they could do five olive oils. So down there. And if we draw this line, there's their production possibility frontier. So what this means is they could do any combination along this line. They could do one olive oil and a little bit less than one avocado right here. Um, they could do five olive oils and no avocados. That's great. So the, these are the two production possibility frontiers for both Mexico and Italy here. Let's finish that line. So if they've decided to trade, they would want to, to determine if it is a good idea to trade. If they can, if one of these countries can get olive oil or avocados from the other for a cheaper price than it would be for them to stop making their product um, that they're really good at, then it makes sense for them to trade. So what we're gonna do is calculate um, kind of the comparative advantage between these things. So to do this, we essentially have to calculate what it would cost for Mexico to produce olive oils. We don't know the price, but we do know how many avocados they would have to give up in order to produce olive oil. So what we can do is figure out who has, um, to figure out how many avocados they would have to give up to make um, one ton of olive oil or one liter of olive oil or whatever we're looking at here. So for Mexico, we can do a little bit of math here. We can say for Mexico, if they want to create two, so two olive oils is the equivalent of five avocados. So if they want to just create one olive oil, we can do a little bit of algebra here. Um, if we want to figure this out and figure out what one olive oil equals, we can divide both sides by two. So two olive oils divided by two is one olive oil. Five avocados divided by two is 2.5 avocados. So if Mexico wants to make one olive oil on its own, it has to give up two avocados to do it. Um, because it can't make, or two, it has to give up two and a half avocados to do that. It can't make those because it's it's giving that up so that it can create its own olive oil. So that is the opportunity cost of of creating its own olive oil. It has to give up two and a half avocados, which is a, that's a lot of avocados that it's not going to be making because it's spending more time making olive oil, which is hard for it to do. Um, we can figure out the same thing for Italy here if we do some basic math here. So for Italy, five olive oils is the same as one avocado. So that means one olive oil is, um, if we do some algebra here, divide both sides by five. So for Italy, one olive oil is one fifth of an avocado. So what that means is if Italy decides that it wants um, to create one olive oil, it has to give up a fifth of an avocado um, or 0.2 avocados to make a ton of olive oil. And so there, that's not a lot. And so what you do in this situation is the country that has the lowest opportunity cost has the um, comparative advantage. And so right here, this the fact that Italy only has to give up just a little bit to create its olive oil here um, is a sign that it should specialize in olive oil. 
um, because it's not losing as much and it's really good at making olive oil. Um, and so it has comparative advantage in olive oil. We can do the same thing um, for um, the opportunity cost of avocados. We just kind of reverse this here. So let's erase it really quick. So instead of saying how many olive oils equals one avocado, we reverse it and we say um, for Mexico, five avocados is the same as two olive oils. So if they want to make one avocado, we divide both sides by five. So one avocado for Mexico is the same as two fifths of an olive oil. Um, so if they want to make their own avocado, they give up just a little bit of, of uh, olive oil here. For Italy, on the other hand, um, one avocado here is the same as five olive oils. So if they want to create their own avocado, they have to give up five olive oils. They're really good at making olive oils. And so if they want to make just a single avocado, they have to basically give up their whole production. And that's really expensive and you don't want to do that. Um, and so in that case, Mexico has the comparative advantage in avocados. They should specialize in that because the opportunity cost here is the lowest. They're not giving up as much as Italy would. And so the winner here is Mexico. It should focus on avocados because it's not giving up as much as Italy would have to give up if they focused on avocados. And so in this situation, um, we already showed that Mexico has absolute advantage. They're the best overall at creating avocados. Um, Italy has absolute advantage in olive oil, but they also have comparative advantage in each of those. Um, Mexico is the best at avocados compared to Italy um, because Italy is not that great at making avocados. Um, it, and Mexico is not as great at making um, olive oil as Italy is. And so they should specialize in the thing that they have comparative advantage for, not absolute advantage. And so where this gets really fascinating is if they decide to specialize in these things and Italy only makes olive oil and Mexico only makes avocados, the production possibility frontier actually changes. Um, instead of, um, like before we said that Italy or Mexico cannot hit this point at all. It can't get um, two olive oils and three avocados. That's impossible uh, because they don't have the production capacity for that. So that is an infeasible point. But if they start trading with each other, we can actually draw this line right here connecting those two points because they, they are trading. So this means that both countries have access to that line. Um, if you're Italy, you can still get avocados um, and olive oil if you make a whole bunch of olive oil and sell it to Mexico in exchange for avocados. And so you can actually hit this point right here or this point or this point. Both of those countries can hit any of those levels. So that means if you're Italy or Mexico, you can get like one thing of olive oil and four things of avocados. Mexico would have to give up one of their avocados, but then they can get lots of olive oil for it. Um, and that's a lot cheaper than if like before they were having to give up like five or two and a half avocados to get one thing of olive oil. But because they can trade, they can actually expand the, the amount of stuff that's available. There are more avocados in the world and more olive oil in the world because they can both specialize in those specific products. Um, so that is kind of why we care about trade and the gains from trade. But what's important here and what can sometimes trip you up is in this case, the absolute advantage and the comparative advantage were the same, but that is not always the case. What determines who should trade and who should specialize in what isn't related to absolute advantage. It's related to the comparative advantage. So let's look at another example of this to show that just because you have absolute advantage in something doesn't mean that that means you should specialize in it. So in this situation, we're instead going to look at Mexico and Costa Rica at this time. Um, so we'll use blue for Mexico, like we did before. So Mexico could, um, so before we said they could make five avocados and two tons of olive oil. That's kind of their limits. If they specialize in either of those, that's the maximum they can do. Um, Costa Rica, on the other hand, is a much smaller country. They don't have as, as strong of an agricultural sector. So let's say hypothetically that Costa Rica could make three tons of avocados 
and one ton of olive oil, or one liter, or one billion liters, or whatever. Um, so looking at this, um, which country has absolute advantage in avocados? Um, that would be Mexico. They have absolute advantage here. They're the best at avocados. Um, they make the most avocados out of any of those two countries. And then if we look at ha who has absolute advantage in olive oil, it is once again Mexico. They make more olive oil than Costa Rica could. So according to this, if we just go by absolute advantage, Mexico should make everything and Costa Rica should do nothing. But that doesn't make sense because um, Costa Rica can still produce stuff. You can still get stuff from them. And maybe it's cheaper for Mexico to not make one of those products and instead get it from Costa Rica. And the only way to figure that out is to actually look at comparative advantage and not absolute advantage, which is why we can't just go by the rule of who has absolute advantage over some product. You have to look at the comparative part. So to figure that out, um, let's draw a graph so you can actually see this. So here is... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So here's Mexico. They can do um, five this or two. Let's label this. This is avocado. This is olive oil. So Mexico can do this line right there. Costa Rica, on the other hand, um, they're purple here. They can either do three avocados or one olive oil. So even in the graph here, you can see that they're below Mexico at every single level. Um, they don't have absolute advantage in anything. But because of this whole rule of comparative advantage, Costa Rica actually has an important role to play in this trade, um, and they can still expand the production possibility frontier and get more olive oil and more avocados out into the world. So we need to calculate the opportunity cost or the cost of avocados in the number of olive oils like we did before. So what we're going to do is do olive oil first. We're going to say for Mexico, they can make two olive oils, and that's the same as making five avocados. So if we want to convert this into just one olive oil, we divide by two, divide by two. So one olive oil for Mexico is the same as two and a half avocados. So if Mexico wants to make a thing of olive oil, it has to give up two and a half avocados. That's their opportunity cost, which is fairly steep. Um, before when we were working with Italy, um, they didn't have to give up as much. Um, and so that like it was great that they could specialize in avocados because they don't want to give up two and a half avocados. Um, they didn't have to give up nearly as much to, to produce their avocados. Um, if we switch to Costa Rica, though, and do this the same thing, for Costa Rica, one olive oil is equal to three avocados. And so here, um, if... Costa Rica wants to make its own olive oil, it has to give up three avocados to do so, which is more expensive than Mexico that only has to give up two and a half avocados, which means in this situation, the person with the lowest opportunity cost here has the comparative advantage. And so in this situation, Mexico actually has the comparative advantage for um, olive oil. They don't give up as, much, as many avocados as Costa Rica does which means it's cheaper for them to make olive oil than it is for Costa Rica to make olive oil, which means maybe Mexico should specialize in olive oil, even though they have the absolute advantage in um, avocados. They're really good at it, but it's more expensive for Costa Rica to focus on that, and maybe they could save money by, even though it's expensive for Mexico to do, the, um, to do olive oil production, they can still get it cheaper potentially from Costa Rica. So let's mark that down. Um, we found that Mexico has comparative advantage in olive oil. So there's Mexico comparative advantage. So let's erase this section and we'll figure out the opportunity cost switching the avocados and olive oil around here. So if we switch it and we come here, we're gonna say for Mexico, they can make five avocados and that's gonna be the same as two olive oils. So for one avocado, we can divide by five. So one avocado is the same as two fifths of an olive oil. Um, and so again, like that's good. They're only giving up a little bit of olive oil to make their um, avocados. And so that's a good, good opportunity cost there. If we look at Costa Rica, on the other hand, they could make three avocados 
and that would create one that's the same as one olive oil. So if we convert that into just a single avocado, we divide both sides by three. And so what we have is for Costa Rica, they, if they want to make one avocado on their own, one avocado equals one third of an olive oil here. Um, and so in this situation, um, the country with the lowest number here, this is two fifths or 0.4, this is one third or 0.33333. Um, for Costa Rica, they actually have comparative advantage in um, avocados, where they're not giving up as much um, of the olive oil as Mexico would be if they were producing olive oil. They're giving up 0.4 olive oils if they make um, avocados here. But for um, Costa Rica here, they're only giving up a third of an olive oil um, if they specialize in avocados. And so according to this, Costa Rica actually has comparative advantage in avocados and they should specialize in that. Um, which means in this super stylized tiny world where these two countries are the only two countries that exist and these are the only products they make, it would make sense for Mexico to not make avocados anymore and to instead buy their avocados from Costa Rica because Costa Rica can make it cheaper than, than Mexico can um, because they're giving up um, more um, to make um, the avocados than um, Costa Rica is. And so it's better for Costa Rica to focus on that. Um, where we see this in real life, this is a hyper stylized example here, but when we look at like international trade agreements, um, back in the 90s when the North American Free Trade Agreement um, became kind of a, a, a global treaty, um, lots of uh, furniture manufacturing, especially in Appalachia and in like uh, Western North Carolina, dried up um, because it became cheaper for other countries to focus on furniture production, um, specifically China. Um, lots of jobs started leaving, um, like lots of standard, like normal jobs that were based here started leaving the other countries because the opportunity cost um, for making furniture was actually better in China. They didn't have to give up as much as we did in the United States to produce furniture in like Asheville or Charlotte. And so because of that, the furniture industry kind of evaporated in the 1990s. Um, and it was 100% based on this idea of comparative advantage. It was cheaper for um, other countries to produce stuff than for us to produce stuff, even if we have absolute advantage in something. Um, we see this still today with um, iPhone parts and computer parts. Um, iPhone pieces are manufactured all over the world. There are some parts that are made in China, some parts made in Korea, some parts made in Germany, some parts in the United States. Um, and Apple knows of all of the different um, comparative advantages that these different countries have, and they choose the countries that have kind of the best deal for them, that have the best comparative advantage in making specific computer parts or specific battery parts. And so as a result, they actually can expand the amount of computer parts that they can make because they are having these different countries and these different um, companies in these countries specialize in specific aspects of the whole iPhone assembly process. Um, and so, again, main moral of this story is when you're trying to figure out who should trade with who, you don't look at the absolute advantage. You look at the comparative advantage, and then that actually expands the amount of possibilities um, of of stuff that you can consume and stuff that you can make. And in theory, it makes everybody better off. Um, but as we mentioned in the lecture, there are a whole host of equity and fairness issues. Um, the furniture manufacturers that lost their jobs to China because it was cheaper to make stuff in China lost their jobs. Um, and that is not great. Um, and there needs to be something in place to help them recover from losing their jobs and get retraining and stuff. And we'll talk about that in future sessions about how government can help ensure some level of fairness and equity and equality when those kinds of jobs shuffle around because of this, this idea of comparative advantage. So now you have the tools to actually calculate this. Um, again, the fully worked out example is on the website. Um, in your problem set, you'll have a similar um, question that you'll have to work through to calculate like kind of what one country has to give up to produce one certain good. Um, and as long as you just follow that example, it should hopefully um, be clear and easy to follow. So good luck with that.